recent years, Blue Origin is absolutely spiraling down to the bottom. While SpaceX seems to be constantly innovating and pushing forward with new technology every year, a lot of people can't help but think that Blue Origin is putting in more effort than they're getting out of the results. To save the company, Jeff Bezos has stepped down as the CEO of Amazon and focused more on Blue Origin. So is the company making progress now? What exactly is Blue Origin doing? Let's talk about everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Blue Origin has been working on the BE4 engine for quite a while now. This process has had its ups and downs. Over the past few years, delays had been accruing in the program, including turbo pump problems, combustion instability, overheating, and a shorter than planned engine life, just to name a few. In addition, company management issues in the past left insufficient hardware to build development engines, leading to extended periods where no testing could be done. These, among other issues, have continued to delay the completion and release of these next-generation rocket engines. However, recently it seems the company's been making better strides with their engines. On June 22nd, Blue Origin shared shots of its BE-4 rocket engine in an important test phase. Amazon and Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos is awaiting engine readiness before his company's new Glenn rocket can take flight, and United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno needs BE-4 engines for its Vulcan Centaur system. For the first time, our Huntsville engines team has installed a BE-4 into Blue Origin's refurbished and historic MSFC Test Stand 4670 preparing for commissioning test, the company said today. Alabama is not only home to NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, but also to Blue Origin's engine production facility. Blue Origin agreed to modernize the NASA MSFC Test Stand 4670 seen in today's images three years ago for BE-3U and BE-4 rocket engine testing. The 300-foot tall vertical firing stand was built and used in 1965 for Saturn V testing during the Apollo program but it went offline in 1998 after being used for the shuttle program. In fact, this is not the first time Blue Origin has shown off the BE-4 engine progress. One such video was shared in May this year that showed the BE-4 firing up in all its glory. The engine ran for more than a minute as it was able to sustain its performance for some of the flight time required to leave the Earth's atmosphere. The video also provides a glimpse of the engine from its nozzle as it lights up. The nozzle is the region of the rocket engine that controls its thrust interaction with the surrounding atmosphere. Looking up from the nozzle, one can spot the engine's injector plate that's above the combustion chamber. In this chamber, the engine's fuel, LNG, and liquid oxygen, in the case of the BE-4, are combined and lit up to generate thrust. While the video is of low quality, the plate's visible and it shows the moment both the LNG and oxygen enter the chamber. Sharing high-quality images of injector plates of newer engines are forbidden by U.S. law, so Blue Origin can only share low-quality video at best. However, after all this, the truth is that BE-4 is not yet operational. That day is even far away. It's still long been at the center of painful delay and deadline misses, which have harmed not only Blue Origin but also the ULA, which would use the BE-4 for the next-generation Vulcan Centaur rocket. In 2018, Bruno selected Blue Origin over Aerojet Rocketdyne, but the deal hasn't worked out as well as he hoped. Making a new rocket engine is difficult, and Bruno budgeted extra time into the schedule. I planned on the BE-4 being late because I knew it was ambitious for them, Bruno told reporters in April. I did not plan on them being this late. But no one can happily wait forever. Now publicly, Bruno's maintained a professional posture, saying he had confidence in the team at Blue and that it would deliver. But privately, he's very frustrated with the delays and has pressured Blue to get the engine ready. Bruno says delivery of the engine should happen this summer, and the first flight of the new Vulcan Centaur rocket would come later this year or early next year. Not only Vulcan, but Blue Origin's rocket itself is also reaching a dead end because of the delay of the BE-4. Named after astronaut John Glenn, the Blue Origin's plan with New Glenn was to ferry people to space as well in the long run, and the boosters would be landing on a ship, much like Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy do. Unfortunately, New Glenn has a head start, but has spent a long time in Gratitum Lane. 
Multiple sources report anecdotally that Blue Origin is continuing to hire like crazy in Florida and elsewhere, They're pulling a lot of people from NASA and staffing up areas such as Project Jarvis. This proves that Blue Origin really wants to make the project a reality soon. However, Blue Origin has to balance New Glenn development with the completion of BE-4, which will be used by both New Glenn and Vulcan. It's fair to say you're focusing on your most important customer, delivering BE-4s so I can fly this year, Quip Bruno. The company is in the process of setting a new date for the first launch and discussing that with customers, but it was premature to announce. It will not be at the end of this year, he acknowledged. New Glenn will never catch up with the competitors. The currently active version, Falcon 9 Block 5, has flown 100 missions, all full successes. As Blue Origin races to get its engine to the sky, SpaceX is speeding ahead with Starship's next generation launch vehicle platform. The chief, Elon Musk, expects that the rocket will be ready for an orbital test later this month and his company plans to use 33 Raptor 2 engines on a single Starship to make the rocket the largest in America. Notably in contrast to the long delay of BE-4, according to Musk's February Starship update, SpaceX now only needs 24 hours to create one Raptor 2 engine. The rate is more than twice as fast as compared to Raptor 1 production speed. We're, we're close to achieving um, one ra a Raptor 2 uh, every day production rate. So, so seven a week. This is because according to Musk's latest update, Raptor 2 engines are about 20% more thrust and 20% less mass than Raptor 1. But the focus has been heavily on production rate and reliability. Mass, thrust, and ISP will all improve, as will production rates, reliability, and cost. Starship is essential to NASA's efforts of landing humans on the moon later this decade through the Artemis program, and Blue Origin is one of the companies vying to secure another contract from the space agency for the same purpose. But perhaps Blue Origin will never get that. That's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed it and don't forget, like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications to make sure you don't miss any new updates from Alpha Tech. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.